Hi, welcome back to the shop. Today, we're gonna to continue working on the turn lamp that we started last time. And if you remember right, we started by putting, gluing up some segments together and then setting them up on an axle over the router table and turning the basic column for the lamp. Today, we're gonna to work on making some moldings for the top and the bottom of this column. And we're gonna do it in a similar fashion as we did the, the basic column itself. If you look at the drawing that I made originally for the column to get the segments from, I added some additional lines to that. This line right here, that's the actual di diameter of the column that I made. This inside line here, that, I, that's what I want to be the inside diameter for the molding um, that we're going to make. And then the outside would be the outside diameter for that molding. Once I put those lines in, then I just extended out my radius lines so that I could come up with the segmented pieces for the column. I went ahead and cut those out and now we're ready to glue those up. Here are all the pieces I made for the glue up and I pushed them up against my router fence just so I'll have something nice and straight to keep everything aligned. Now you'll notice that I am going to be gluing end grain to end grain on these. So there's some precautions that I have to First take. First of all, uh, I'm going to be using five minute epoxy to glue this together. And the other thing is once it's glued together, I'm going to put an internal frame in here that will be attached to these blocks and hold it together so that I don't have to worry about them uh, accidentally coming apart. I'm just going to put them up against the fence and bring them tight and then I'll bring a secondary board in here to make sure that everything is aligned correctly. Once everything's aligned, I'm just going to use some tape and I'm going to put several coats of tape on here to hold this together. So now that this is all glued together, you should be able to turn it over and bring it around and form the circle that we're going to need for our glue up. Before I glue everything up, I just want to put it back on my lines that I've drawn up to see if it fits. And it looks like everything is going to work out uh, just the way I want. may have to mix up a couple batches for this, but it's okay. Here's the moment of truth. We'll bring this all together. Got a really nice squeeze out. I have a couple pieces of tape I can put across here. Should we get everything lined up? Okay. Well, everything looks really good. I'm just going to let this sit overnight and then we can come back and start working with it. I let the glue set up overnight and then I just kind of cleaned it up with some 120 grit sandpaper real quick. Uh, and now we're ready to true up the inside of the ring and, and make it a true diameter. And to do that, uh, I have a piece of wood here on the router table and I'm going to cut out a circle in here and I'm actually going to use the outside of this piece of wood to mount to my ring um, and then I can run a pattern bit on the inside to true everything up.
Okay. So there's the circle, and now we can just put that right here, and I'll line that up and put some screws in it, and that'll give me the ability to true up the inside diameter of the ring. Now that I've rounded out the inside of the circle, and it's not perfect, but it's good enough for what we want to do, I'm going to put my circle cutting jig back on the router, and I will cut a couple of pieces that are going to fit exactly inside here to make sure everything is held stable while I do the rest of the milling operation. Now that we have it cut, I wish I could say it was just that easy, but it took a little bit to figure it out. Uh, now I have a perfect match that will slip right in there with a good fit. One thing before I glue this final piece into what's uh, ultimately going to be the molding, I want to make my cylinder itself the same diameter uh, so that it will slide inside of the molding here. Now it's just a little bit big, so I just made a quick set of calipers and I set it to the exact uh, diameter of this piece, and I know this will slide in there. And I put the cylinder back, or the column back onto the router table, and I have it marked. I'm just going to do the bottom three quarters of an inch. I'll just slowly raise up the router bit and turn that down, measuring as I go until I get it to the correct diameter so it'll slip right over. Now that I have that diameter set, I'll just re the pro repeat the process on the other side of the column. I have everything set up on the router table just like I did the main column and now I'll just raise the bit up again slowly and turn this and turn the molding stock nice and round. There we go, it took a few passes, but uh, it looks like I got it nice and round exactly the way I want it. Now I'm gonna take some time to, while it's on the axles, to sand it down with, uh, through the grits, uh, and then I'll start uh, working on cutting in some of the molding that I'm looking for. My original intent with this project was to cut the molding profile while it was still in one piece right here on the router table. Unfortunately, when I looked at my profile bits, I realized that most of them are top bearing bits, so there's no way I could feed them up in here. I do have one cove bit that I could cut a cove out, but uh, I would waste half of that cove, so I'd waste quite a bit of material if I did that. So what I've decided to do, I'm going to square up the ends uh, on the uh, on the outsides here, I'm just going to spin it around as I raise the bit up, and then I'm going to come over about three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to cut a fairly deep groove in here that I can that way I can take it apart and cut it in half, and then I'll do my molding profiles on the individual halves with the bearing topped bits that I have. Now that I've bisected the piece almost all the way through with my router bit, I'm going to finish it up with a handsaw. After this, I'll just use hand planes or whatever I need to complete it over at the workbench. While it's on the, the jig here, it's probably the easiest just to do it here. We're now ready to cut the profile for the base of the column. And on this one, I'm just using a simple roundover bit.
we can now cut the molding profile for the top. To make the top and the bottom, I did the same thing as I did with the columns and the molding pieces. I just segmented out what I was looking for. And in this case, I used eight pieces instead of 20. Uh, I drew it out full size, and that way I knew exactly what I was going to get. For the top, I want an outside diameter of about 11 and a half inches and an inside diameter of six inches. So I just drew those out and then segmented it out to see exactly how wide of a piece I was going to need that I could get the proper diameters. And then I went ahead and I used uh, just epoxy to glue this up and I've mounted it to a board and now I'm ready to take it over to the router table to cut it round. Now we're going to use the circle jig to cut out the top piece for the lamp. And the first thing I want to do is cut this inside diameter so that it's six inches. And to do that, I just measured out three inches from the center of my pin to the outside of my router bit, so that's three inches. You want to make sure you do that and not to the inside of the router bit, otherwise you're going to end up with a piece where the hole is too big. First thing I'll do is cut out this inside circle and then I can uh, reset the circle jig to cut the outside diameter. Now that the top has been cut to the final dimension, I'll change router bits and cut my final profile. Now that I'm done putting on the profiles, I'll sand this down through the grits, apply a finish, and then I'll be ready for the final assembly of the lamp. I put a number of coats of finish on the top and now we're ready to begin our final assembly. The first thing I'm going to do is take the top piece, I'm going to turn that upside down on this towel here, and I'll take the top molding ring and I'll lay that out. Now I kind of roughly put in some very faint lines here and I'll see if I can spot them. Holes but I'll have to drill into the top to get it started. Now that that's done, I can take my workpiece and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue along this inside here and then I can put the main part of the column on. Now I can just set this in place. We'll set that aside to dry while we work on the base.
Well, here's what the finished lamp looks like. And overall, I'm, I'm happy with the results. If I had to do it over again, I might make the, the column a little bit uh, narrower, as well as the, the top and the base. But uh, in general, the proportions um, really work for me. And really, it was designed to display this uh, glass ball that I had a chance to, to blow. So, um, you know, and, and the other thing I really like about this project is that I was able to do a turn project without a lathe. It just shows that you can use the router table for a lot of different things that you wouldn't necessarily think of uh, originally. That's all the time we have for on this project. It may be a few weeks before I can get another video out. Uh, I have a lot of travel coming up and, and uh, may not have time to get spend as much time in the shop as I would like. Also, I need to take some time and just really kind of clean out my shop. I haven't done that uh, for a while and it's starting to, to get a little messy in here. As usual, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please feel free to email me at andrew at thelevelplumbandsquare.com. And until next time, enjoy your day.